Recently, many fitness watches have come up with key features like women's personal health tracker. To be honest, that's a really great feature, and I don't have any complaints about it. But what about the men? They go through a hard struggle every year to take up the NNN challenge, which lasts for a month. So for the well-being of all the men out there, here comes the November Safe Fitness Watch. This gives the motivation that is needed for every man to go through this struggle for 30 days. This can detect the motion of your hand in all three axes and warn you with haptic feedback to keep yourself in control. And if that's not keeping you sane, it will drop an embarrassing email to your friend or family and make you totally uncomfortable. And the only chance you could survive is by running away to some other country or so. Hence, this will definitely keep you motivated throughout the month and prove how strong your willpower is. How is this watch compared to other fitness brands? Wi-Fi? Check. Customizable? Check. Battery capacity? Check. Haptic? Check. OLED display? Check. IMU? Check. Along with some of the common features that you would see in other fitness brands like flick to wake up, heart rate monitoring, and display auto turn off and turn on, etc. If you are impressed by this and if you would like to buy one, just go to getnsfw.tech. and place your order right away by the way that's an actual working domain this video might be very late to the party but i think this is definitely worth the wait anyhow the idea for this project just popped up randomly while having a casual conversation with a friend initially the plan was to just build a watch which will electrocute the person when it detects any forbidden motion but it's quite risky as it would just hurt them physically and not give them any mental struggle or even motivation so what's the better way to punish someone embarrassment seriously what else could be better than this so to keep up with an an challenge you can write a risky email inside the watch which you would never send to someone but in case if the watch detects that you are doing something suspicious it's going to warn you two times with the haptic and the third time it will just send the email and you're screwed and that's how you can keep yourself motivated for a month and not lose the challenge that's the short summary for the inspiration behind the november safe fitness watch before jumping into soldering and messing around we'll build a prototype with node mcu which is also based on esp12e which we'll be using in the final build so to start with we'll go with the display i used a 4 pin 0.9 inch oled display the pins are marked ground vcc scl and sda That's because it uses I2C interface to communicate between the microcontroller and the display and this display is made of 128 pixels horizontally and 32 pixels vertically which gives a total of 4096 pixels and by turning on and turning off these pixels we can display different text images and other graphics for the connection connect the SCL of the display to D1 and SDA of the display to D2 because D1 and D2 are the default I2C pins of the Node MCU and to power the display connect the vcc and ground to 3.3 volt and ground of the node mcu to test if the display is working or not go to your arduino ide and download the adafruit library from the library manager then go to example and select the ssd 1306 128 cross 32 i2c example Just make sure you have set up the Arduino IDE for the ESP core and just compile and upload the code. The display should play a demo sketch with different graphics and text. If it's not working, check the connection once and try again. For the next component, we have the pulse sensor. Supposedly, this sensor should be easy to use, but it was a total mess and it took me a few days to just make it work properly. One of the reason was it cannot be used on the wrist just like other fitness watches do. Or maybe it wasn't working well with my skin. But anyway, it was working excellent on my index finger or else I had to place it in some weird position on my wrist to get the reading. The electrical connection was extremely simple. Just connect the VCC to 3.3 volt and ground to ground of the Node MCU. And finally for the sensor data, connect the S pin of the pulse sensor to analog pin A0 on the Node MCU. Coding should be damn simple. All you got to do is just read the analog data using the analog read function and display it on the serial monitor. And once you have uploaded the code, open the serial plotter, press Control Shift L. Here you can see the analog data of the sensor in a graphical format. When you place your finger on the sensor, you can see the graph changes rhythmically to your heartbeat. Here are a few different graphs obtained when I place the sensor on different region on my left arm.
even though the data when you place it on the wrist is weak we'll be using this technique in the later part of the video or else we would end up building a another attachment for the index finger so to avoid that we'll just go with it now somewhat the pulse sensor is fixed we'll see how to use an imu or inertial measurement unit for this build i'm using a mpu 6050 which is a mem sensor with 6 degree of freedom which will measure acceleration in three axis and orientation of your hand in three axis the interface for this imu is also similar to the oled display which we saw earlier just connect the sda and scl pin of the mpu to d2 and d1 of the node mcu and connect the vcc and ground to 3.3 volt and ground of the node mcu but what if you want to connect the oled display along with it that's the beauty of i2c interface with this communication protocol with just two wires apart from the power supply you can connect up to 128 similar devices or modules to program this with node mcu i'll be using a library from adafruit which is adafruit mpu 6050 i'll drop a link in the description which would give you more insight on how it works once you have downloaded this using the library manager you can go to the examples and select the plotter example file here we can see graphically how the sensor value is affected moving xy xz or yz planes we get the acceleration and if you want to get the orientation or gyroscopic data just twist and turn across x y or z axis since now all the components are working great and we saw how to interface now we can combine everything together and test just connect them in the same order as before now for the code go to my github account and download the fitness watch code mostly i work with arduino ide for all of my video but this project was bit complicated so using vs code along with platform.io made the job a lot easier there are a lot of videos on youtube which gives a detailed explanation on how to install vs code platform.io and use it with arduino and node mcu so i'll just give a brief overview go to code.visualstudio.com and download the stable version for your operating system once that is done install the setup file then open the vs code and install the platform.io extension then reset the vs code when your window opens again it will have a new icon on the left side of your window click that icon and click on the open now use this drop down list and select the project you want to open in this case open the project which you have downloaded from my github repo once your project is open click on the platform.ini file this is where the platform.io recognizes the libraries serial communication speed and framework that we are using to make it simpler and easy to port back to arduino ide later on i have used all the libraries which i have installed in arduino ide instead of downloading a different version inside the platform.io all you have to do is just change the path of this line to your arduino library path and also check the github readme to see what all libraries to be installed in the arduino ide before compilation Before I get into the details of the code, make sure the code is error free and compiles without any problem. To do this, click on the tick button. This will compile your code and show any error or warning in the terminal. Followed by the compilation, connect your Node MCU to your PC and click the arrow button. This will upload the code to the Node MCU. You don't have to worry about which port the Node MCU is connected because platform.io will auto detect and upload the code without any issues. Now let's Test this breadboard prototype once. As soon as I power on the OLED display, it shows the current time, but this won't be the same for you on the first boot. In the later part of the video, I'll explain how to set up the Wi-Fi connectivity with Wi-Fi Manager. Once you do the Wi-Fi setup, it will show the time, or the display will go blank. To test the pulse sensor, first you have to navigate to the BPM screen. For that, just click the flash button on the Node MCU. After that, you place your finger on the pulse sensor. In my case, I just taped it to my finger to stop it moving around and to keep it secure. When you take a look into the OLED display, the pulse sensor data is drawn as a graph in the display, as well as beats per minute or BPM is shown. So with this, we know both the display and the pulse sensor is working without any problem. Now to test the MPU, just let the device rest for a while. After about 15 seconds the display will turn off. Now just flick the breadboard and the display should be back on again. From these tests we know all the hardware parts are working completely fine. If you have come this far a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated and a like would be so far welcomed as it makes the video gain more reach on this platform. 
Now we can do the final build on a puff board and add a few additional features and works. Um, I meant tweaks. For the physical structure of the watch, we'll be using the PCB itself. So take a puff board which is 3.6cm by 5cm. In this, we have to make a slot which we can use to put the strap on. I know this month is driving all the men crazy. Even a normal sentence sounds so wrong. Anyway, for making the slot, I started with drilling some small holes consecutively and sanded it with the same drill bit. Now you have to repeat the same thing on the other side. If you don't like sharp edges like me, use a sander or a high grade sandpaper to sand off the edges to make it look curvy. Dang it, I did it again. Now we can place the components on the PCB and solder them together with the same exact connection. Just refer to the pinout of Node MCU and ESP12E for the comparison to see how ESP12E pins is mapped to the Node MCU. Just follow this video to see which component should be soldered first so you can complete the device without messing with wires all around the watch. Start with the ESP12E, solder the VCC and enable pin together. Without this the IC won't turn on. Then place a insulation on the back of the 12E to prevent short circuit when we place it on the breadboard. After that follow with a momentary switch. This will act as both a programming button as well as a button to navigate on the screen. You also need to have a pull-up resistor connected to the button or the ESP12E will go to the flash mode on boot. Now we'll add a few new features along with the breadboard testing, adding the haptic feedback. This is a small haptic motor which will give a physical feedback when the forbidden motion is detected. Just place it next to the 12E and solder it to the GPIO 13 and ground. Now add the 3.3V regulator and solder the pins according to the connection in the circuit diagram. Then place the 180mAh LiPo battery along with two male adapter pins for charging the battery later. Switch is optional, it's not recommended to have it if you're gonna use this watch. Since the watch is just for demo, I'm gonna use the switch anyway. Once the soldering of these components are done, place the IMU, just like this. And to finish it off, solder the OLED screen. But before soldering the OLED display, I have taken out the analog pin on the back of the board to solder the pulse sensor later on. If you have seen my other videos, you would have known how to program the ESP and ESP 12E. Just connect the TX pin of the 12E to RX pin on FDTI module and RX pin of the 12E to TX pin on the FDTI module. Then just connect the VCC and ground to each other. Just make sure while you connect this to your PC, the programming button is pressed constantly. This will put the 12E on flash mode where we can upload the program. Just compile and upload the code like we did for the prototype. Once the uploading the code is done, we should be good to go. Now let me explain how to save the Wi-Fi credential to the ESP wirelessly using the Wi-Fi manager. So as soon as the device is turned on, the display shows a blank screen. So use the PC or mobile and connect to the access point called enter credentials where the password is password. Once you enter this, a login page will pull up automatically asking to enter the Wi-Fi SSID and password. Just enter the credential where you want the watch to connect, in my case internet and I am entering the password. Now you can see the device boots and shows the time perfectly. Now you can test everything that we tried earlier. To make it completely functional, I am adding the velcro which will act as a strap for this watch. To finish it off, we'll add the pulse sensor. As we saw before, this isn't that accurate and not that great to be used in a fitness watch. And also, reading from this sensor will have a great impact on where you place the sensor. In the end, this sensor won't work out that great, but still, I placed it within the strap so I can fix it later, or at least replace it easily without damaging the rest of the circuit.
Now to finish this, I'll add a small foam behind the watch to make it comfortable to wear on the hand. With this, we have completed the hard way for the watch. Before turning on the watch, let's see how the code works behind the scenes. It might seem a bit daunting at first, but the working is fairly easy. For the clock, I'm using the time library along with NTP client because it needs internet connectivity only once and can run a soft clock even after disconnecting from the internet. But I haven't optimized the code for that yet. For the OLED, I'm using ESP8266 OLED SSD1306 library just because it has some pretty good text alignment and custom font features. For the IMU, I'm using the same Adafruit library and for the buttons, I'm using the interrupts. And finally for the haptics, I'm just driving the pins high and low. To calculate the BMP, I'm just taking two consecutive trough signals and then calculating beats per minute. And to calculate the forbidden motion, it's almost the same. Just calculate the number of strokes per minute. By changing the variable number of times and this number, you can adjust the sensitivity to detect the motion. Finally, I'm using the email sender library to send email over SMTP. So we don't need any third party application or API to send the email. The email will be triggered when the warning counter variable reaches 3. Putting the watch into the test. Time. Check. Flick to wake up. Check. Warning haptic on motion. Check. Sending mail on motion. Check. Heart rate monitor. Uh, and check. I totally screwed up the heart rate sensor and the location of the sensor is terrible. So my suggestion is use one of the sensors from SparkFun which uses I2C communication. So you can hook it up to the same line and just make a few modification to the code, it would work great. Before ending the video, I would like to apologize if I have hurt anyone in any means through this video. The whole story and the concept was just for fun. And it's not hard to build this watch solely for this reason. That's why in the follow up video, I'll show you how to fix the heart rate sensor with a better one and use this watch to make a hand gestured control home automation system. If you guys have faced any trouble building this, you can comment your doubts and suggestions below. I'll definitely go through each one of them and if you like the project, just smash the like button. Unfortunately, this video might seem a bit focused towards men, but actually it's not. 80% of the video is just made for educational purposes. So share this video to a friend who you think might be geeky enough to build one of this for fun. And also be subscribed to the channel to get notified when I upload such crazy projects. Finally, to keep up with the upcoming projects and to support me for making more videos, you can follow me on Instagram and also become a Patreon.